Endless Hustles presented by Victory Brewing Company and the Victory Monkeys. Check out Golden Monkey, a smooth 9.5% Belgian triple with notes of banana and cloves. Sour beer is more your thing? Pucker up with Sour Monkey, a 9.5% sour triple with fruity notes from imported Belgian yeast. Delicious 9.5% ABV beers that don't taste like 9.5% beers? The Victory Monkeys just hit different. Check out the Victory Monkeys at victorybeer.com to find Golden Monkey and Sour Monkey at retailers near you. All right, we got a great day on the Endless Hustles. I'm joined by the king of the catfish universe and a man who's now working with Zell to help us not get catfished financially. Pretty cool stuff. What a what a great just symbiosis of bringing brands and concepts together. I love it, Neve. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, I was felt like I'd been waiting a long time for someone to say, hey, why don't you help get people talking about how to get smarter and not get scammed financially the same way that you've been helping them sort of wise up about not getting scammed emotionally. So it's a perfect fit. I mean, that's the thing. I was thinking about this. You can literally apply catfishing to any aspect of life. Like you should be selling catfish services to like, we have now financial services engaging, but there's a gajillion more. It's like, are you getting catfished in this? Are you getting catfished in that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true, especially with all of us now, you know, sort of learning how to use our phones to do everything and, and changing the way we, we transfer money and even what money is and NFTs and crypto. I mean, it's like, there's so much new information and, and, and we're all trying to catch up. And unfortunately that also means there's a lot of vulnerability and misinformation. So uh, as much as I can be the face of uh, uh, truth and, and facts, the, I'm happy to do it. So let's talk about what you're doing with Zell. I'll kind of throw the ball to you because I'm sure you're going to do a much more effective job of explaining <laughs> it than I am. So what did, tell me about this partnership. I mean, basically, for the past 10 years, people have been coming to me with their situations and questions and concerns about online relationships. Um, but mixed in with that, I've had a lot of people come to me with questions uh, regarding uh, scams. Uh, how, how to how to get out of them? How to per perhaps um, correct them once you've been scammed? Is it, what can you do? What are your resources? And I haven't really known what to say. I haven't really had the answer. Um, so the idea for me personally was I want to learn uh, how to be smarter. I want to I want to know what the red flags are to look out for and what to do if and when I, I feel compromised. And then, much like I do on the show, create content that people can watch and, and, and hopefully will empower them and give them the tools they need to do the same thing. So the idea is we're going to make these videos. Uh, right now we're doing just a sort of series of four videos, each of which addresses uh, some of the more typical uh, situations that, that the everyday person will find themselves in, uh, in terms of potentially getting scammed and what you should and should not do when in those situations. It's crazy to think, man. Catfish is now like over a decade old, starting yeah. with the movie, the TV show. The TV show is like it's actually probably on the iconic scale for MTV at this point. Is it crazy to look back from the beginning to now, three kids later, dancing with the stars later to think about what's happened with this whole thing? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, I don't miss uh, an opportunity almost every day to sort of reflect on the, the good fortune I've had. Uh, to have been able to experience something that, you know, while at one, in on one hand was heartbreaking, uh, but on the other hand was, a, was an opportunity that I was able to take advantage of, and and then I still get to make this show, which not only do I love making, but I genuinely feel is helpful to people and and empowers them not just to you know confront their fears and and be more honest and open with with you know their feelings, but also you know, equips them with some tools they can use to hopefully avoid getting taken advantage of or, or feeling that heartbreak for themselves. So it's pretty amazing that I, that I really do get to do something I love that is, for the most part, internationally seen and accepted as a really positive uh, thing that, that has helped a lot of people. Take me back to the beginning when the movie first launches and people start becoming aware of this term and what's happening and you helped bring it to the fourth for light. What was it like in the beginning when the story came out and the show started? 
I mean, it was pretty wild for me. I, you know, I, I didn't really have any ambitions of a career in entertainment. Um, I was actually more sort of behind the camera as a producer and, and photographer. Uh, and to all of a sudden be the person that everyone was opening up to and, and looking to to tell their stories or, or to get help with their situations was a, a bit overwhelming at first. Um, but what I quickly learned was it was a necessary uh, role that someone had to take. Um, and obviously the opportunity to, to do something constructive with it and also, you know, get a great job was fantastic. And, and what's actually weirdly very similar now uh, is I feel very much like the conversation I'm having about scams um, at this moment it has a lot of parallels to sort of what I was feeling back then when it came to sort of getting catfished because so many people right now are getting scams. Um, I think in a study Zell did, in a survey they did, 25% uh, of the people who responded said that they had been the victims of some form of financial scam and that 50% of the people said they knew someone who had been the victim of a scam. And I think similarly, People don't want to really talk about it. They're embarrassed. They're uncomfortable. They feel foolish. Um, and so what I'm discovering, especially after posting that first video, is that people started DMing me, much like they did back in 2010, saying, oh, my God, I got scammed. I lost money. My, my mom just lost money or something happened to her. And all of a sudden, I'm realizing that there's a, there's a major conversation here that we're not having, that we need to be having so that we can all you know, be a bit more informed and savvy and, and hopefully uh, protected against this stuff. When did you realize the show was a hit? When did you realize something special was happening? I think, I mean, there were a couple moments. The, 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 the probably the biggest one was, I, it was during season one when, um, without any warning uh, on a Saturday uh, evening, um, I, people started calling me saying, oh my God, uh, Adam Levine just spoofed you on, on Saturday Night Live. They did a catfish spoof and Adam Levine played you. Um, and, to, and, then that was, and I didn't know what was happening and I quickly went and found it on. I mean, it was like, that was wild. That, that when SNL sort of spoofed the show, I think that was when we knew we, we must have done something right. <laughs> Did you imagine the longevity that would occur, though? I mean, listen, a decade plus in television world is right. like 86 years in dog years, right? Like yeah. it's like forever. Did you ever imagine that it would go this long? No, no. I mean, I, I for me, it was season one was exciting. And, and, and if there was a season two, that would be awesome. But I know how rare that is. Or I, I knew at the time that that was very un, unusual. And yeah, here we are now kind of, vaguely in what some might say is season sort of 11 or 12 but technically it's eight i don't know it's confusing but it is it is great and and it has afforded me so many great opportunities um like you mentioned dancing with the stars and uh and that's and, and honestly and, and i'm just so honored that i i get to maintain this role kind of offering guidance uh both emotional and technical to people um through the show and that that, that to me is Again, not something I ever necessarily set out as an ambition to sort of be this uh, compass for both moral and and you know social media uh, correctness, but it works and I love it and and that's why I'm kind of looking to expand that and keep keep that going in new places and so that's that's what this Dell thing is all about. You just ran the New York City Marathon. Congratulations! What a what a beast that thing is, and it's just incredible. Anybody who's able to finish that thing, I'm like in awe of because I can barely run a mile these days and I'm in pretty decent shape. But it got me thinking, you at this point have become an iconic New Yorker. I'm a Philly transplant who moved to New York a decade ago. And I always tell people that New York helped shape me as a person, both personally and professionally. You're a lifelong New Yorker. What is it about New York for you that in, in which it's helped shape you both personally, and professionally shape the direction of your life and influence it? Wow. Um, well, the, there's some a couple, couple versions of that. I think, you know, one of course is my, my ability to experience the arts growing up. 
um, and to be surrounded by such fantastic institutions, Lincoln Center, Juilliard, um, just sort of the, the downtown off-Broadway theater scene uh, and having parents who, who were eager and, and open to taking me to all kinds of shows and, and encouraging me to, to dance and go to musical theater school. And I mean, like, you know, I was just very lucky to be in and around that energy. Um, but I also think, you know, on a, on a somewhat more uh, visceral level, New York City is a, I don't know how, what, what the, what the uh, parental guidance rating is for this podcast. Fire it's, away. A mother, it's a motherfucker. I mean, it's, it's a tough place to be. It's, it's, it's unforgiving. You know, there's, there's, there's no space for like relaxation or, or, or laziness. It, you're, it's a raging river and you've got to, you know, strap in and, and swim for your life the second you walk out your door. And, and that, I think that energy and that, that excitement and that unexpected chance that occurs every day and you have to kind of be prepared and, and willing to say yes and, and completely change your plans and, and just sort of go with it. That, that oh, I think prepares you in a weird way to take life on and, and be willing to say yes to things and, and dive head first. Um, and I, I'm, I think that has served me well in, in my life. When you were growing up in the arts, was there a moment for you where you realized that was your passion and that was actually going to be your career direction? Yeah, I mean, I, I still think, or rather, I, I still feel strongly that I should have really been in the sort of performing arts as a lifelong career. Um, I, I do feel like that's where my passions most strongly lie. but for whatever reason, my, my interest or commitment or dedication or willingness to sort of really apply myself uh, to achieve that level in, in that field wasn't there uh, at the sort of key stages of my life when you would need to be uh, focusing on that. Um, but my interest in dance and my, my passion for, for, for music all sort of guided my career paths and, and led me to photography and filmmaking and introduced me to friends and and I can go back and trace a very kind of clear path uh, that led from the arts to my friendships that then turned into my photography and getting catfished because my pictures were in a newspaper and then the movie, you know, like there's, there's it all sort of, when you look back, you can say, oh, wow, yeah, that, that all kind of fits together uh, and, and weirdly put me in the right position at the right moment to make that decision to do that thing. And it worked out. I was talking to Barbara Corcoran last week from Shark Tank, and she has just such an incredible story. And her, she herself has become an iconic New Yorker. But she was telling this great story about when she first came to New York, walking by a newsstand. And here's this like out of town girl trying to make it. And she's kind of like, oh, my God, I'm in New York. And at that moment, she realized she was a New Yorker. What was your New York moment where you kind of looked around or experienced something and felt like, man, this is my city. I'm part of the organism. Wow. Um, I mean, I've obviously had a lot of those moments because I've just always been in New York City. Um, oh, I recently actually, I have a perfect example. Um, last year, when lockdown started, uh, I took my wife and our two kids to our home here in Los Angeles, um, where we come often, but usually not for very long periods of time, but we were fortunate to have it to kind of be here for quarantine and have a bit more space. And um, we were here for about seven months. We got back to, we went back to New York City last fall and things were sort of opening up a bit and, and whatever, cases were, were down so you could do indoor dining. And, um, and I remember we went to a restaurant for the first time sometime sort of late last fall. And as we were leaving, uh, I had asked to take some of my leftovers to go. And they brought them in two small containers. And it was, you know, the restaurant was busy. It was small, it was, you know, tight. And you kind of had to walk through the area where they get the food from the kitchen to get out to the, you know, like it's a small New York City restaurant. And I didn't have a bag for, for my two to-go containers. And our waiter, who was now standing at the sort of window to the kitchen, 
getting orders ready and had also just answered the phone and was on the phone taking like a delivery order. I see him and I, I start to walk over to him and I'm telling you, before I can even get the question out, before I even was able to say, excuse me, can I get a bag? He must have just per, from his peripheral vision seen that I was holding this big goat containers and beginning to motion towards him. And with his one free hand reached behind his back, grabbed a bag off of the like hanger and just handed it to me, didn't even look at me, just handed it to me, just knew. He knew what I needed. He couldn't have been busier, but he figured out a way to get it to me. And in that moment, I was like, this is why I love New York. There's a caliber of, of, of just awareness and like amazingness that you have to have in order to, like, to perform well in this city. And that guy has it. And I love that. Um, and it was just a great moment where I was reminded how special it is to be in New York and, 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 and the people that make it so great. How do you start dealing with fame? Once people start watching Catfish, it becomes a monster hit. Now you've become some level of celebrity, quasi-celebrity, whatever it is, right? MTV fame is enormous. How do you start dealing with that once it hits? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how, how one deals with it. I know that for me, I dealt with it, um, you know, in some ways well and in other ways a little bit less well it was you know it's tough to have people kind of expect a level of excitement from you and and willingness to kind of perform for them when when it comes to stopping you in public um and wanting to take a photo uh you know and for the most part i'm very lucky people tend to to like me uh, I'm not a, I'm not a disliked celebrity, um, which is great. I don't, I can't imagine what it would be like if people were unhappy to see me, uh, out in public. Um, but, you know, learning to embrace that, the, the, the good fortune I've had to, to make my show and to have people enjoy it and to have them be excited to meet me and to just be very willing and happy to give them that one or two or 10 minutes that they will then sort of take with them and will make their day and, and give them something meaningful to talk about um, is a real gift. It's super special and it feels great. And I'm constantly kind of getting affirmations from people all the time. Like, Hey, great show. Love your show. Thanks like for doing what you do. Um, and whatever slight inconvenience that might um, have in the moment is it, it's far outweighed by the overwhelming kind of positivity that it brings into my life. Um, but again, I'm like you said, kind of quasi celeb so i don't deal with the insane paparazzi and pressure and and watchful eye of of the world the way that some of the kind of top celebrities do so i don't know how that would feel and i don't really want to know how that would feel um i, I get to pretty much live my life as an ordinary person so i'm, ha I'm very very grateful for that in this decade since catfish premiered Obviously, technology, everything has changed. I mean, I, I'm 43, man. I see what these little kids are doing with their Finstas and all this other shit that I learn about. I'm like, man, it's like crazy out there. Now that you're married, you have three kids. Do you, is, it, is it hard to keep up with the trends and what's happening now versus where you started a decade ago? Yeah, I mean, it is hard. Um, and, and I think especially for kids, you know, younger, the younger generation, whether it's Gen Z or millennials, um, their whole life now is sort of tethered to their cell phone, um, as is their sort of personality and self identity. Uh, and that's tough. I don't, you know, I mean, I, I, we sort of, sort of know what that feels like, but, but they just have it organically kind of built into their experience of life. Um, and as a result, they're, they're using social media to, get information uh, and find out all kinds of things, um, you know, and to tie it back to Zell, like that's where young people are getting both good and bad information about best practices when it comes to living their lives, you know, as young adults in terms of, you know, their jobs, their, you know, information about banking and all this, you know, all this stuff that, that sort of we're trying to address in, in this campaign. So the idea for me is like, Young people need some sage advice. I, 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 I'm, I'm grateful that I have considered someone that they trust. Um, I've, I've, I've worked hard to earn that trust. And if I can find a practical application of that through this campaign to kind of put some good positive information out there to give young people 
uh, some tips and tools to keep their finances uh, secure, then I'm thrilled to do that. I also love you're doing the videos on TikTok, which as someone who's not on TikTok, but I understand the power of TikTok, I get it. Yeah. How, what do you think of TikTok in general? This is like the new social media platform. It's not even new anymore, but it's the platform yeah. now. What do you think as, as old men ourselves, what do you think of the whole TikTok generation? I mean, look, I, I like that it is a mostly sort of, it's a platform that tends to promote music and movement. You know, there's a lot of dance and, and song on the app, um, which again, I think just speaks to the power of the arts whether you think of it that way or not, like that's why the app is working because uh, people like to see people dance and they like to hear music. Um, so, so in that way, I find that it's a, a good creative platform for people to, to express themselves. You know, I think like anything else, there's a lot of boneheads and, and silly stuff on there. Um, and it can be a, an easy place to lose, lose track of time and waste, waste a lot of time. Um, but it's also a fun place to share ideas and, and to have unexpected uh, talent be discovered. Uh, I have a really good friend who has been a performance artist for 25 years. And he did a commercial for Starburst 20 years ago where he came up with this like weird character called the little lad. And some young TikTok guy who has a haircut similar to the one that my friend had in that commercial kept people kept telling him, oh, you look like the little lad. Well, he made a video side by side with the picture of my friend from 20 years ago. The video started trending. My friend got on TikTok. Now he's got over 2 million subscribers. He's he just got a new Starburst TikTok campaign. He's got an article in the New York Times and he's making money uh, like, uh, again, with this weird character from 20 years ago. It's great. It's, it's, there's, there are some really great stories and things that come from it for sure. Dude, this has been awesome. As a Zell user myself, unfortunately, all the time, which means money's coming out of my account most <laughs> of the time. I love everything you're doing. And I think financial literacy and just protection is such an important conversation right now. Before I let you go, final question is, you must have seen some crazy catfish shit over these years. What's the craziest, the, the Mount Rushmore at the top of the Mount Rushmore <laughs> catfish that you've seen or heard about? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I, people often ask me this. Uh, and I've never thought to say it, but I, I really feel like I've still not seen the craziest. I'm sure that there are, there are wild stories yet undiscovered. Um, and we're filming one right now that, that's already off to a pretty wild start. But, uh, you know, to, to, to me, I think I'll, ne I'll probably always feel like my catfish experience was the wildest and, and, and I think in some ways kind of the most eye-opening um, just because it, it was so dynamic and, and so uh, elaborate. I mean, the, the number of characters that, that the woman created and, and the phone numbers and the artwork and the, the lies that she came up with were, and the music, I mean, there were so many elements to it. Um, and so for me, that's, that's, I think that's still the number one uh, wild kind of catfish scenario that I've, that I've seen. I mean, some of that shit's crazy out there. I'm like, it's <laughs> terrifying to be online these days. Congrats, Neve. Always great to chat with you. Congrats on the campaign with Zell, man. Thanks, Arthur. Take care, brother.